Today I'm going to answer your most burning questions that came from the video on oral contraceptives, the daily pill, and I think there are 25, so we are going to go through all of them. It's going to be a long one. The first question, do pills balance the hormones? Because I was bleeding and given them and it has stopped. No, it will usually depend with what's causing the bleeding. Now, if you don't have a certain hormone, then you're given a pill to replace that. We call that hormone replacement. If, for example, you're overproducing something like estrogen, you're given another hormone, that will counter the effect so when you, you're taking the pill, it's going to stop or just moderate. The cycle will be normal. But once you stop, then uh, it goes back to your bleeding or having the irregular menses. And this goes for all the balancing that usually depend on you taking a hormone. You don't know the underlying condition or what's causing this. So unless you fix that, and sometimes it's not even possible to fix what's causing you to overbleed or even have those irregular menses. If you cannot be able to fix that, then you'll have to rely on the pills or the repressment forever or until you get your menopause. So the thing here is to know what's actually causing you to have that. Doc, is there a relationship between contraceptives use and fibroids? It's a risk, yes, but it's not a cause. So it doesn't actually cause the fibroids, but it's a risk. It reloads the gun, but there's something else that actually pulls the trigger, especially the estrogen based. Talk about natural method. Now, the only natural method that I know is just avoiding sex. If you avoid that, then that's a natural method. Or just making sure that you're not getting a spam. Otherwise, anything like, take for example, people usually say that when you use something like copper, IUD, it's a natural method because it doesn't have the hormones, the chemicals that you usually use for that. But remember, you have copper that will create inflammation or a very bad environment for the implantation for the egg for the even the sperm so it's not actually uh, let's say natural method so the only method is the barrier method while i was saved days let's gather here here you have two categories of people you have those with the regular menses and it's so easy for them because you can be able to predict when you're getting the ovulation and you can be able to avoid that area if you're not planning to get pregnant so you have others with irregular menses and for this it's usually a little bit harder to know unless you know exactly when you are ovulating if you have the signs and you know how they usually come so you avoid that area now it's usually very hard so this mostly it's beneficial to people who usually have regular menses and it's not a 100% method of uh, contraceptive. So you can actually get pregnant using this method because your body might just be decide to misbehave just one day. With implants, no period for the past uh, year now, plus weight now. Weight is one of the things, that you, especially with the implants, is one of the side effects you usually get. And that's the reason why your doctor will have to confirm that you're not overweight before you get there. Because he's not planning to have you add more weight on already overweight person. So adding weight is one of the things that is one of the side effects. And also sometimes uh, having no periods, just one of those side effects. And uh, like I usually say all the time, drugs usually interact with our bodies differently because we are different and before a drug is commissioned to be used in a population there is a what we call clinical trials and they usually pass based on the performance performance is is it beneficial to majority of the people in the population so we usually have at that tiny group that usually have the negative effects of the drugs despite the drug being the same so be your one among those who usually get the negative effects. And on weight, progestin based usually assume or tricks your body into thinking that you're pregnant. And when you're pregnant, you're prone to adding a lot of weight within a short period of time. Hello, Dr. Nimekwa, nikitumia sindano, nikacha, but nikona three months, sijaona period, what can I do, please? Now, if you're talking about sindano and yenajua, uh, okay, we have several. We have implants, but we natumia sindano. But uh, the one which I assume you are, you are talking about, the deeper provider, one of them. So those that usually have a hormone that will inject it into your muscle. Now, mostly, this is a high dose of a hormone. And usually take, for, usually take three months before the effects wear off. And then you'll have to go back and get that injection again. Uh, if you have stopped and uh, you're done with the three months, then you'll have to give yourself more time. And especially if it's something like a depot provella, it's very notorious. It can even take you for up to even nine months before you even start getting back your menses. Or even for like, I've seen people with even five years. So it varies. And this is the reason it's banned in most of the countries because of the side effects. It can even make you uh, infertile. So it's a risk. Talk about safe days. Now, safe days. Mostly, like I said, is usually beneficial to those people with regular menses. I'm going to pick 28. This is what we usually get in textbooks and some people. But uh, as a normal cycle can be between 21 
and 35 days so long as it's regular so it's happening on daily basis every now and then so let's go to a 28 day cycle because this is the ideal one day one is when you start getting your menses it goes all the way up to day 28 this is when you are getting your menses now ovulation is supposed to take place around 14 but to be safe we add all minus two days so between 12 between 12 and uh, 14 plus 2 this will be 16 12 to 16 this is a fertile period so anything can happen in between you can get pregnant easily around this point now let's go to the sperm the longest living is five days so you'll have to minus five days from 12 uh this is the longest a sperm can live so this will go all the way up to the seven and also after ovulation your egg will take 24 hours to move from the ovary all the way to the uterus and if there is no fertilization then you start getting your menses right alone now because we are paranoid let's make it two days 48 hours instead of the 24 hours so now this is day 16 you add two days from date 18 so from 18 all the way to 28 those 10 days and also from date 1 to date 7 this is a safe day for a 28 day cycle you can just apply this to any other day if it's 21 or even if it's 35 you can apply the same to arrive at your safe days which pills can i use when i'm breastfeeding now we have so many brands but you'll have to concentrate on the actual compound is it progestin based because those are the ones that usually work best when you're breastfeeding progestin based usually don't interfere with your breastfeeding so your lactation will continue because it doesn't affect the milk production talk about the mandatory pill taken every month i think you're talking about the sophia chinese pill so this one just avoid it i have a video on that just go and check the side effects that people usually get including uh getting bad defects especially if at one point you use sophia and it gives you a very high dose of the hormones extremely high so it usually predisposes you to so many risks it's not worth it. I was told that they are the ones that give me DVT, deep vein thrombosis, I had to stop using them. Yes, especially the estrogen based. They are very notorious on team. It's a risk. They usually don't cause, but they usually predispose you to getting them. So not everyone usually get them, but it's a risk, especially for the estrogen based contraceptives. Talk about the blue pills and the effects. Now, especially for men, this usually create a dependency. Um, we actually should make a video on this, so I'm, I'll give more information on that. But in a nutshell, it creates a dependency whereby your brains cannot be able to activate your sexual arousal unless you have that pill. So it's not recommended unless you have a condition in your body that will always rely on using the pill. And the effects of the pill usually we are off with time. So maybe you might have or maybe you might start off with that using just the half of the pill. And then uh, you, with time you find that your body is not even responding to the half so you start taking the whole pill and then you just graduate to taking more and uh, at this point there's no going back so you cannot even actually afford an erection unless it's assisted i have been using them for two years how soon can i get pregnant assuming that you didn't have a negative effects from the side effects then um, you are supposed to become pregnant immediately you stop them so not pregnant actually you become fertile so it will be upon you now to make sure that um, you target the ovulation day. So from there then you can become pregnant in terms that you want. But in case you have those other um, side effects that you usually get from using the pills, then you'll have to give you yourself time for your fertility to resume. At the health voice, help me please. Nick to me are three months, Nanyesha non-stop, Nipe advice, Naiza to me again. I'm not going to give you an advice based on just one single text because I'll have to get a lot of contacts from you because they usually uh, react or act on you differently. There is no gold standard when it comes to contraceptives. People will say, hey, non-hormonal will be best for you, but they can be best to someone else and not you because it might introduce something like PID, which is a risk that you usually get when you get that copper um, coil that usually insert there you might start getting pelvic inflammatory disease or some other issues when it comes to that you can get a short depo provera and you're totally okay you can get the same and get maybe you become infertile forever so they usually are based on uh, your condition your body so you'll have to talk uh, with your doctor give them more context so that they arrive or you narrow down to the best that will work for you are you married I think I'm going to make a Q&A video that uh, will focus on my personal life or if you want to know anything personal. So I think just, just make sure you follow us so that you get to get this answered and so many other questions. Number 15, what causes ectopic pregnancy? Now, we have several causes. And ectopic uh, pregnancy usually happen when uh, the implantation does not happen inside the uterus. It can happen in the cervix, it can happen inside your abdomen or 
the most common ones is usually along the oviduct now the fallopian tube mostly it's caused by one pills the emergency pills that usually interfere with the movement of the egg maybe you're taking them when you're ovulating and one of the things that usually happen when you take them we have those that usually make sure the movement of the egg from uh, the ovary to the uterus is inhibited so it's not moving as it's supposed to now assuming that you meet your partner and you have the sperms traveling and it, they go and uh, meet the egg and your, the, the fertilization take place the egg is supposed to be moved all the way up to the uterus for implantation so because now the movement is affected it's going to stay there or take a really long time before it gets to the uterus to a point where now the implantation will take place in the oviduct. Now this will create a very risky pregnancy called ectopic and for this one you'll have to go and see a doctor for termination because this one can uh, endanger your life. Another cause is for example IUDs. In case you become pregnant and you have that implant, the IUD, you really need to see a doctor because another thing that will happen is it usually makes sure that implantation will not happen by creating a very unconducive environment for anything fertilized so anything sperm or fertilized egg or the egg the condition is very bad for that so you might already have a fertilized egg moving down and once it gets there it's unable to implant so it falls down it goes to your cervix and you get that pregnancy attached to your cervix so that only contribute to a risky pregnancy and supposed to be stopped another one is um let me just draw this one quickly it will make more sense when i draw it so you have your ovary there and this is your this is the fallopian tube. Now, um, you have the sperms coming and they come. You have ovulation taking place. And remember, you have a space here. This is a space. So the sperms can come here. So the egg, instead of using the oviduct to come all the way here, it falls into your abdominal cavity. And then the sperms come and then they fall. They go meet the egg. It's rare, but it happens. So you're going to get pregnant inside your abdominal cavity. It's a high-risk pregnancy. So it's supposed to be... Uh, observed by a doctor to assess the risk. This is a sign I should start family planning like any of the chemists. Now, you should not start uh, your family planning because you've been triggered. What you're supposed to do is to plan. Now, I don't want to get another kid or maybe I want to space them at uh, uh, this point. I want after three years or maybe after five years or I don't want to have a family at all. So um, you should use those reasons and not a video that you see online to make you go and... Uh, maybe start your family planning. Can you talk about cryptic pregnancy? Now, this is a pregnancy where you don't actually know that you're pregnant until maybe you're delivering or maybe when it's already too late, you are, you're about to maybe deliver. Now, this usually happens when you don't have the symptoms or when, uh, let's say, I want to say like uh, you are irresponsible in a way because you are, uh, you're supposed to observe your sexual hygiene, your sexual health, your reproductive health every time. So, I don't know how you didn't know. Okay, most people usually don't know the symptoms, so they end up uh, not knowing. And this is a risk in itself because what I usually say is once you become pregnant, you're supposed to start um, antenatal care so that you get to be assessed for anything that can harm you or your baby so that uh, the health of each and every person is guaranteed throughout the pregnancy. If you take them for long, is there a probability for cancer? No, they don't actually cause, they predispose you to. They load the gun and uh, something else usually pulls the trigger. That's what they usually say all the time. Now, especially if they're progestin-based, they're not so much riskier than uh, the estrogen-based and especially those with a high dose of the hormone. They usually predispose you to uterine cancer, uh, cervical cancer and uh, ovarian cancer. So they predispose you to that, even uh, the breast cancer. Are there non-hormonal contraceptives? Yeah, we have, and there, there are so many. We have barrier methods and also we have uh, IUD where you have the copper creating a, an environment that will make sure that you don't get pregnant. So we have them. There are so many. You can just Google and do, or just go and ask your doctor. They, they give you so many options about them. Which contraception method can you say is the best in regards to effectiveness and side effects? What I usually say is sex was meant for procreation and not for recreation. It's human being that evolved sex into something that you can use for fun, but it was not meant for that. So there is no best contraceptive method apart from just avoiding sex in all, 
or just making sure the sperm is not getting to using the barrier method making sure the sperm is not getting to the egg that's the only contraceptives that's the best using the barrier method not using the chemicals and all that people usually say copper is the best but uh, this one is still not good to everyone it will just give you side effects it will be good in some other people but in others the same way it happens when you are taking progestin based the oral pills and you have even people who usually take the emergency pills on a daily basis and they're good. So they usually react differently. The best method is just to avoid sex and or avoid the spams in all the cases. Nimetumizi pills for one year peke. Sayi imekuwa ngumu kushika mimba for five years sasa. Now, several things. I want you to focus on several things. One, why you fertile before you started taking the pills? Because if you are not, then it means that maybe even right now you're still not. Your partner is your partner providing viable spams because if not then uh, you are still not going to conceive second you need to know that we still have side effects when it comes to the usage and like i keep saying that um, drugs are usually given to the population once we, we have promising uh, effects or promising results from the clinical trials now there is no drug that is 100 percent we have a tiny uh, people in the population that will be negatively affected by them so I'm not saying that, that this is you, so try to go to your doctor and try to narrow down to what actually causing your infertility. Doc, ni ridungwa sindano ya three months, saai niko one month breeding, nifanya nini tafadhali. Now, are you from South Africa by the way? Anyway, that was a joke. Now, breeding, you're giving, I don't know what you mean by this statement because now breeding is giving birth. Now I hope or I'm assuming that you mean bleeding bleeding that is oozing blood the injection for three months mostly is depo provera it's very notorious when it comes to the side effects so maybe you're one of them so you love to wait for those three months to just wear out and uh, the unfortunate thing about them is you love to wait until the effects are off this is not an implant whereby you just remove the implant and then within some few days you start getting back your menses or maybe everything resumes the normal uh, cycle but for this one, because now the drug was already injected into you, you'll have to wait for those three months for the effects to wear off, and then you have the side effects. Sometimes it can go for nine months, and sometimes even three to four years, so you'll have to be very patient. So give yourself time, be patient, and it will just come back. Question number 23, part two. Now, um, sometimes I usually make very long videos. I usually don't like, uh, I don't prefer making tiny, short videos. Because when it comes to medical descriptions, you'll have to give context. They usually take time. So my videos, sometimes they can be long. And I usually cut them into several. And uh, I can upload them independently, especially on TikTok, because they usually limit how much or how long a video can be uploaded. I'm limited because of two things. One, the size. I should have recorded in 4K. I don't like downscaling, so I'll just upload that. So... TikTok will limit the size of the video that I'm going to upload. So this is the reason why you mostly usually find me uploading four minute video, three minute video. And in case it goes beyond that, I usually put them on my other platform. So that's where you can go and find the full version. So in case maybe you find that I have only a section of a video here, it's existing somewhere. So just go and look that in my platform. To me, I would want to know the accent <laughs> behind the person. Okay, let me try to use a Kikuyu accent. Tumia Gidwairi Dagitari. Yes, that sounds a little bit better. Now, the reason I usually use English is because it's usually very hard to describe a medical condition using other languages. So I love to use English because this is what I was taught using and this is the most universally accepted language. And this is where you find that um, I can just use only one term to describe a whole thing. So sometimes you think it's so highly for me. So I prefer using the language from the Lake Legion, from, from the Joka Joka. <laughs> oh, damn, this is fun. Birth control pills can cause cancer, be aware. So um, they usually don't cause, they predispose you to. And it's a risk. And uh, this is in a tiny amount of people and uh, mostly. And what mostly causes fear is what if you are among the few people that will go get it? I don't know. Question number 26. Talk about vasectomy. I'm not going to talk about this here because I have a dedicated video on this one. You will have to wait for it. And um, actually to just define the whole thing, vasectomy is making sure that the sperms are not moving from the scrotum, from the 200 shillings going all the way out so it's kind of a creating a barrier there so we have several methods of the vasectomy we have several side effects we have 
the good and the bad. We're going to look at that in a future video. What about depo? If you get the injection after sex, utashika ball ama. Now, what are you using the injection for? Is to prevent you from getting pregnant. Now, if it's specifically made to make sure that you're not getting pregnant, I don't see the reason why you'll become pregnant after getting that injection. 